I tell her to F off and leave me alone. As soon as she starts to type, I block her number. Now the creepy part starts. She goes out of her way to get noticed. She stands behind the person I'm talking to. If she knows them, she walks up and says hi to them. Even people she wouldn't interact with normally. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another subscriber email story. Guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Whether it's a successful story, a story where you've gone through something, did you bad, but you learned your lesson and you want to teach it to other guys, you made it out successfully. You leveled up on someone. We had those types of type of uh, subscriber stories. You got revenge. You got to see someone go through karma. A story you think can help the listeners here. Send your stories into that email. But you guys read the title. Let's just get into it. So girl leads me on, then stalks me when I get fed up. <laughs> Crazy. Hello, True. Been a follower of your channel since late 2021, and I never thought I'd find channels that actually seek to help men. Your channel has provided me with hours of both useful advice and hilarious content. I appreciate what you do. Keep up the great work. Anyways, I thought I'd tell my story to help out others who may find themselves in a similar situation. If possible, I'd rather stay anonymous. English is not my first language. I'm Hispanic, so I apologize for any mistakes made. That's what's up, man. And like I used to say all the time, guys, if you you can put in you can put in the email, hey, can you shout out my channel? Hey, can you shout me out? Uh, I got this going on. I'll shout you out. Uh, I've always done it ever ever since I first started doing these subscriber emails. Um, just let me know or if you and if you want to remain anonymous, just tell me, hey, keep me anonymous. I'm not going to say any, say your name or anything. All right, let's get into it. I am currently 23 years old. Let me preface this by saying that for the longest time, my self-esteem has been extremely low for most of my life. Only recently have I started to value myself as a man and to see myself as being worthwhile. I was never popular with the ladies in high school or for a large portion of my college years. To give you an idea, my first relationship was in 2021. Another messy story for another time if you want to read it. Yeah, go ahead and send it in. And only recently have I been getting some attention from women. In the present, I am definitely more confident and have abandoned my blue pill ways. Good. I'm still learning, but I'm definitely no longer a simpish blue pill who prioritizes women. However, I definitely know I'm going to earn a few simp points with this story. Hey man, as long as you learn from it, I'm happy. My story takes place throughout 2019, starting around March, and it predictably starts with a girl in my college. Let's call her Sarah. Sarah's a pretty attractive girl, long black hair, good figure, and decent face. She hung out with a group of mutual friends we had at the time, and we mostly didn't interact. If only it had stayed that way. Our interaction started when I saw her at a bus stop. She was alone, and I was talking with a friend of mine while heading toward a faculty. I noticed her, so I stopped and say hi before moving onward. Two days later, she added me on Facebook. I assumed she was asking around for my name because we had never been introduced. While a little creepy, my heart jumped at the thought that she looked me up. It may not seem like much, but as someone who was always ignored by women, unless they were my friends or they just wanted attention, I was curious and a little excited. I added her back and some days later we actually started talking in person. Soon enough, we exchanged phone numbers and Snapchat info. 
We started talking more and more, and I felt a good chemistry. So one day, I shot my shot, and I asked her out. She says yes. I'm over the moon for a few hours. However, that same day, we met up, and I asked her if she felt comfortable, and if I didn't put her on the spot. Much to my dismay, she says she doesn't feel ready for another relationship because of her previous one. Classic excuse, but I didn't push it. I thought we could still be friends since I'm not the type to hover around a girl when she says no. However, now she knew I was attracted to her. Now the real messy stuff starts. After being told no, I continued being friendly with her. She sought me out at the time. Ironically, we grew closer and closer as time went by. Soon enough, she started saying and doing certain things that hinted at an attraction. She'd compliment if I made a self, self-deprecating joke. She'd call me charismatic. She'd just trust me with sensitive information and she'd send photos. The photos were the icing on the cake. She'd send me photos of herself after working out, send me photos of herself trying on clothes, and even once accidentally sent a photo of herself in her bra on Snapchat, which she deleted before I saw, but proceeded to describe in unnecessary detail. Between the photos and nice words, my dumb self fell hook, line, and sinker. I started to get emotionally involved. However, she continued to reject me or hint that she wasn't interested. Yeah, she's playing around. I consulted my closest friends, which included women, to make sure I wasn't misinterpreting anything or imagining signs. I showed them the text messages and told them about the interactions. They were just as, if not more, confused as I was. They were trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. But by now, I'm sure you know she was leading me on. I was in a deep depression at the time. This crap was not helping. Since I trusted Sarah, I made the mistake of confiding in her. I was stupid enough to tell her how deeply I felt and even cried in front of her when my depression got the better of me. I was beginning to lose sleep and appetite over her and she knew. Worst position to be in. I know, I even once went to a bar near the campus where she was at and got drunk. She noticed me behaving weirdly, and when I was leaving, she held me tight because she didn't want me to drive. That was the first and only time I've I've driven drunk and regret it to this day. It It was a selfish move that put me and others in danger. I somehow got home unscathed and fell asleep eventually. I started drastically losing weight and was much more dour than normal. However, I lit up when I saw her and spoke to her. She noticed me losing weight and seemed to feel guilty, or so she claimed. Stated that she wanted to fix me. Said she wanted to see me happy and wouldn't give up on me. I was still a mess and I admit I was being a whiny bee at times. Even she got angry and told me to man up. I got ticked off at that moment and told her to back off in roundabout way. That my issues weren't something I simply used for attention. She claimed that she calmed down and continued speaking to me. This dynamic continued for some time until there was a sudden new player in the game. Enter a good friend of mine. Let's call him Luke. Luke was my polar opposite. He was confident, energetic, optimistic, charismatic and he had a fairly good reputation. Luke and I hadn't known each other long, but he earned my trust by being a slick talker for treating me like a decent friend. Towards April, I introduced Luke and Sarah, and they immediately hit it off. Since I knew he was a ladies' man, I was asking him to not go for Sarah. He claimed he wouldn't, and since he seemed like a solid guy who valued our friendship, I believed him, stupid enough. Fast forward to June, Sarah and I still maintain a similar dynamic of her throwing breadcrumbs and me picking them up like an idiot. She comments on my photos on Facebook saying she loves the pictures where I smile. Eventually she confesses that she has feelings for somebody else, which destroys me inside. 
I tell her it's best if we don't speak for a while because I need to sort myself out. She's her off guard and she starts apologizing. And I just tell her that we can eventually speak when I'm better. Some days later, I'm speaking with Luke and he's asking me how it's going with Sarah. I tell him it went sideways and he says she wasn't worthy. A better girl will show up. Throughout June and July, I lost a lot of weight due to a loss of appetite and a surgery I underwent. My close friends are actually shocked at my weight loss, and even my mother is concerned. She knew about Sarah, since she basically has to force me to eat. I occasionally went to campus for some academic crap and see Sarah there. She can't look me in the eye and avoids me when she can. At the end of July, I finally talk to her. I tell her I want to talk in person and she obliges. We met at the campus. Luke was around, but he left us alone because he knew I wanted to speak with her and start with the small talk. Eventually, I just asked her why she didn't state that she didn't, she wasn't interested outright. She claimed she didn't want to ruin the friendship and that we had a great rapport. I tell her she could have saved us both the trouble if she had just said no. She then starts to cry and says she doesn't want me to, to hate her. I hug her for a bit until she stops. After she calms down, I ask her if she's with someone else. She hesitates to answer, and I stop her, wanting to wipe the slate clean. The semester starts soon after, and everything is chill for all of two days. I'm in a group which includes both Kenny and Lisa. Everyone is laughing and just having normal conversations. Female friends who knew about this mess join me in the group. Luke walks off to speak to someone else nearby and my friend overhears something. She hears a member of the group ask Sarah, where's your boyfriend? My friend tells me what she's heard and then she's asking me if Luke and Sarah are dating. Something in me snaps. I went from recovering from my depression to a sort of angry determination. At that moment, I tell my friend I'm about to go find out. She noticed a change in my mood and quickly left. One thing about me that has never changed is my temper. Even during my most blue pill days, I've always had a spark of explosive anger. It takes a lot to set it off. But when it happens, the results tend to catch people off guard. I step away from the group and walk over to Luke to speak with him. I outright ask him, are you and Sarah dating? And he gets a deer in headlights look. He starts to immediately make excuses. He says they didn't want to hurt me and that it just happened. He wants to sit down and talk and I just state, it's fine and head back to the group. I hug Sarah goodbye and whisper in her ear that I know about her and Luke. She immediately looks at me with pure shock and I leave. Later at night, Sarah texts me apologizing and claiming they were going to tell me. I ignore her. The following day, she attempts to engage with me and I just, pre and I just pretend she doesn't exist. I don't even look at her. That night, she sends me a scathing text saying that, that I'm being immature and hateful. She didn't like that. She also decided to indirectly say that Luke is everything I'm not and that if I'm going to be like this, I should keep my distance from both of them. Wow. I sent her an equally scathing text calling her a hypocrite who knew exactly what she was doing. I call her and Luke liars and, and just say they both deserve each other. I say that from now on. They are no longer my concern and if and if they try to slander me, I have enough evidence to make them both look like crap. I tell her to F off and leave me alone. As soon as she starts to type, I block her number. She then tries to reach me on Messenger and I block her there without even reading the message. I block her on Facebook and decide that I'm done. They played me for a fool. Luke literally consoled me while he was banging her on the side. So I just decide to cut them both off. Now the creepy part starts. I start to notice Sarah throughout the faculty. If she's ever near me, she goes out of her way to get noticed. She stands behind the person I'm talking to. If she knows them, she walks up and says hi to them, 
even people she wouldn't interact with normally. A friend of mine even commented, Strange, she really speaks to me. After she said hi while we were speaking. The worst part of it is her staring. Sarah has very big and expressive eyes. This means that it's not hard to notice when she looks at you in your peripheral vision. At first, I enjoyed the attention and even felt vindicated. She thought I'd beg to be near her again, even as a friend. But her game backfired and she couldn't handle it. Luke wasn't much better off as he would barely look at me. My other friends, the ones who knew beforehand, also noticed their change in behavior. So I knew it wasn't my imagination when we were together. They'd make a show if I was in the area. At one point, he even had to grab her chin to keep her from staring at me. When he was alone anywhere near me, Sarah would just stare. It started getting creepier and creepier. He peeked over walls or staircases just to look at me. And she wasn't subtle about it. I avoided looking at Sarah directly, but she would always deliberately stand where I could see her. This pretty much went on from August 2019 all the way to March 2020 when the pandemic started and they sent us home. Ever since then, I thankfully haven't seen her or Luke and I don't even know if they graduated or are still together. Ever since that incident, I've ironically started getting looks from women who I thought were out of my league. Not sure if the incident made me cocky or more confident, I've even had a solid 9.5 out of 10 get nervous in front of me in a good way. I'd catch her looking at me whenever when I was near her. The way she did it kind of reminded me of Sarah, which creeped me out a bit. Eventually, I'd have my first relationship in 2021 and forgot about Sarah entirely. When that crashed and burned, I'd stumble onto your channel and the rest is history. I felt glad that there has been millions of guys who had similar experiences, not because they deserve, but because I knew I wasn't alone. At this point in my life, I've been getting looks from women who I thought would have never given me the time of day, and some even gone out of their way to get my attention. In truth, I'm focusing on getting my biology degree in order to enter med school. While I'm not against having fun or another relationship, my studies take priority. There you go. I feel like this mentality I have now ironically gets me more attention. Since I rarely even look at a woman due to my focus, maybe they get curious as to why I ignore them. I figured I'd share my story to help out the brothers in need. Thank you for what you do, True, and keep it up. Men need, men need to know the harsh realities of this world and how to deal with them. You are among a few who are willing to dish out the tough love necessary. And the stories plus your commentary always inspire me to do better. Wow, let me give my thoughts. Man, well, thank you. Thank you, thank you for being a supporter, for following the channel, man. Being part of the True Story Nation. Thank you, sir. Look, man, your story, I promise you, People listening, a lot of people have gone through, have gone through what you've gone through or currently going through. Some people probably will never comment and say it, um, but a lot of people have been in your position and your story is going to help a lot of people. I promise you. Thanks for sending this story in, man. I really, I really enjoyed it. You learned from it. You're focusing on yourself now. That's how you do it. And, um, the whole thing with, you know, man, these girls are interested in me now and I don't even really give them attention like that. That's always, that's, that's something that that's just interesting to them, you know? And that's, and that's what I feel they're getting with you. You're not giving them a lot of attention. You're not chasing or anything. And they're like, why is he not chasing me? Oh, I, I put, I put everything out i i wore this tight this this these tight clothes for him and he doesn't even notice and they want you to notice but i'm gonna tell you a lot of times and you know a lot of women play games as soon as you start chasing up oh, got him time to play now 
I want to play. I want. I'm a date his friend. I'm gonna date this other guy and put him in the friend zone and like don't let don't let people do you like that. And there's a lot of people that'll do you like that. And there's some people that'll there's some women out there that'll get your attention and you'll find out like wow she's actually pretty pretty cool. She's a good friend or whatever. But just like you said, don't ever take your foot off the gas and focus on yourself. That is priority because they are fickle, very fickle. You know, they switch up just like that. They get bored just like that. You've heard all the stories. A lot of people are going through the same things. A lot of men are saying the same exact stuff. Come on, come on. It's got to be some truth. <laughs> I've been through it. So, um, man, I appreciate you uh, supporting the channel, man. And, and I'm glad. I'm glad these stories have been able to help. You know, I've always said, if it just helps one person, if it just helps one person, I've done my job. You've done your job. If your story, if everybody comments and says, oh, man, this story was horrible. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And then one person says, thank you for this story. I needed this. This is exactly what I needed to hear. You've done your job. You've done your job. So, uh, guys, if you want to send in a story, send it to True Story Nation at gmail.com. Here, I put it on the screen. That's True Story Nation at gmail.com. I will catch you guys at the next one. AITA for distancing myself from my daughter after she took her cheating mother's side. I, a 50-year-old male, found out that my wife, 49-year-old female, of 20-plus years, was having an affair. I was completely hurt over this and have started divorce proceedings. Obviously, this has been hard on our four children, but I cannot spend the rest of my life with someone I can't trust. Before we got married, my wife's family had money and demanded I sign a prenup. I had no problem, but since then, the family money has been lost due to bad investments and lawsuits. My wife was a stay-at-home mom for the majority of our marriage. Our youngest child is 19, and because of the prenup, she can't get alimony. In short, my wife will be screwed. The only thing we owned together was our house, and while it is, while it is paid off, my wife won't be able to afford the upkeep or HOA fees. So she will effectively be homeless. I have no intention of giving her any type of support for any reason. Since serving my wife divorce papers, I have refused direct contact as my lawyer has advised. But she's now playing dirty by getting the, the children involved. We have two boys, 23 and 21, and two girls, 25 and 19. And my wife has been pleading with them to get me to agree to halt the divorce proceedings in favor of counseling. After I told my children that I had no interest wasting any more of my life with that woman, they have all essentially backed off except for my oldest, Christy. She's very close to her mother and can't imagine life where her parents aren't married. Christy tells me that her mother realizes her mistake and will do whatever it takes to make things right. She says that I owed it to the family to work things out. Wow, really? Really? I refused and told her that it wasn't her place to make those kinds of demands. Since then, the only time Christy talks to me is when she's sobbing and asking me to not destroy the family. I understand that this is hard for her and, and offered to pay for therapy so she can cope. But she said there wouldn't be anything to cope with if I wasn't trying to divorce her mother. Since Christy is being too emotional to act within reason and refuse therapy, I have been resolved to limit contact until after the divorce. However, my other children are saying that Christy's behavior is getting worse. AITA for taking a step away from my daughter for a while? Wow, and there's an update to this. Let's check out the update. Update. All right, I read a couple of responses and I just wanted to clarify something. Clearly my she will effectively be homeless comment was misinterpreted, so let me set the record straight. 
Because my wife and I own the house together, as long as we sell the house and split the proceeds, she'll get something. My wife didn't give up her career to raise my children. We, we could have hired a nanny, but, but she didn't want that and chose to be a stay-at-home mom for our children. Because of her family money, she was getting a monthly allowance from this state. Plus, I paid for a housekeeper to make things easier on her. Once my wife reached 30, she started getting monthly allowance from the family estate, and the prenup addressed that so I couldn't claim, so I couldn't claim half. In exchange, she couldn't get alimony. I didn't want my children to get involved in a divorce. My wife decided to do that, and even brought up the reason why as a form of preemptive strike. I only talk about the divorce when someone else brings it up, which Christy wants to do all the time. I am not abandoning my daughter. I'm just lowering contact with her until the divorce is finalized because she's not letting up on trying to pressure me into taking her mother back. And refuses to go to therapy that I will pay for. Also, also, the comments asking why my wife cheated is a little offensive. I don't know how that changes anything or that I should care. However, the guy that she cheated on me with was younger, looked like he couldn't be any older than 30. So take that information and do what you will. Edit, update. Mods refused to approve a separate po update post, so here's the conclusion. I just wanted to say that I was very grateful to all your kind words and support in how to deal with my daughter. I decided to follow some of your advice and have a scheduled sit down with her to explain that what goes on between her mother and I is not her fault, and that I simply can't ever go back to a woman who deceived me in such a big way. I told her that I tried to be as forgiving and empathetic as possible, but I will not ever tolerate people who, who lie with a malicious and selfish intent and try to cut them out of my personal life as much as, as much as possible. I was very calm when I said this and tried to be as loving as I could to my child, but it didn't work. Christy ended up breaking down again, and she tried to convince me not to divorce her mother and just forgive her. I refused and in the end went no contact with Christy for a little bit. I only spoke to her again two days before my, my other daughter's birthday through a text asking her to not bring up the divorce since this was going to be the first time my wife and I would be in each other's presence since I filed. I sent the same text to her mother and I didn't hear anything from either of them. Uh oh. Uh oh. On Jane's birthday things were a little tense and awkward. But I thought it was going good, until my wife decided to be passive-aggressive with a speech about how good it is to have family together during important events. Everyone saw through her crap and my son, Jack, 23, called her out on it and said that she was selfish to bring this up on Jane's birthday. Christy started defending her mother and Jane, understandably upset, revealed that the only reason Christy was on their mother's side for reconciliation she don't want the fact that she not only knew about the affair, but helped her mother cover it up. There was a big fight that wasn't going to get resolved right then and there. I ended up leaving and was even more heartbroken all over again. Mm. 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 Not only did my wife betray me, but my own daughter too. I knew she was closer to her mother than me, and I was okay with that, but this... I don't know what I did to make my oldest daughter be so disloyal to me, but I am now resolved to go full no contact with her until, until after the divorce, and possibly for the rest of my life. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. Now, guys, we've read stories where kids or children would know Oh, my mom's cheating. Should I tell dad? Should I tell dad? And for the most part, we're all like, yes, tell him. He's going to hate you. He's going to he's not he's going to not want to talk to you. He's going to feel betrayed by you, too. And I think you should tell that his daughter was just being selfish. Forgive mom. Just let it go and don't divorce. I want to keep the family together. You just didn't want dad to know that you were part of this. You didn't want it all to come out. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Helping your mom cheat. You think it's cute. You're doing the right thing, sir. Leave this woman. In the nerve. You guys get married in the beginning. Her family's, oh, you, you're going to sign a prenup because you're not getting any of our money. Okay, but if it was the other way around, I guarantee you if he said, you're, uh, you need to sign a prenup before I marry you, the family would be, oh, why? Oh, this messed up. You shouldn't do that. See how see how they are. See how everything is. It's just ridiculous. Dude, you're doing the right thing. Leave this woman. She's a piece of crap. <sighs> your daughter's still your daughter, of course. Um, um, but, man. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'll catch you guys at the next one.